On the HART website, <clears throat> we generally divide things according to three main categories, three main topics. Uh, art history, iconography, and religious context. Now, we've, we've talked briefly about religious context, but now I want to just mention something about the iconography. Typically, with a lot of other disciplines or, or uh, uh, resources, they wouldn't make a big deal, such a big deal, out of separating out uh, the topic of iconography. But because with, with Himalayan art, uh, be it, uh, be it uh, Buddhist religion or Hindu, uh, iconography is really a very, very large subject. It's very complex, it's very nuanced, um, and it takes up a tremendous amount of the, uh, um, of the space of art in terms of the subjects of, of sculpture, painting, murals, uh, ritual objects. Iconography is, is a, a huge topic. So for that reason, we have uh, um, divided up the study of Himalayan art into these three categories, religious context, art history, iconography. Now, with iconography, um, it really does overlap very much with religious context, with religious studies, um, and but it is there's far more more to it than what is typical of many other uh, fields of study, similar fields of study. Now, with the iconography, you have to be able to recognize the difference. Uh, you, you really have to recognize the differences between the major religious groups, which are uh, Buddhist, uh, Hindu. Jung Drung Bun, and, and then various tribal groups, various tribal, um, um, indigenous tribal, um, shamanistic um, type groups, which you find, you know, you can find some of them in Tibet, you can find them a little bit in Mongolia, and you can definitely find them on the southern slopes of the Himalayas in Nepal, uh, Bhutan, Arunachal Pradesh, places like that. Um, you can even find some um, borrowings and some conflation uh, even in places like Himachal Pradesh. So with, with all of these uh, religious groups, all of these traditions, um, you really have three uh, subjects which follow, which are uh, appearance, which is general appearance. What are the general appearances which uh, figures have within, within that uh, religious uh, tradition? Then you have what are the main figurative subjects, what are the classes, and then what are the functions? What are the functions of these different figures and different groups, subjects, and classes? Uh, and then third, you have uh, sources and study materials. So the sources, of course, you have the original sources, uh, then you have the secondary commentarial sources, and then for Hinduism and, and, and Buddhism uh, particularly, you, you have the, um, the Sanskrit text being translated into, um, into Tibetan or into other languages. And then with that, then you have different uh, um, commentaries being written from, um, just from a Tibetan language based on a, Tibetan, on, a, on a Sanskrit text translated into Tibetan. And then later on, you also have uh, various um, new texts coming along, or you have edited versions of, of of things to do with iconography. So it is really quite um, involved and it is uh, more involved when you look at it from the point of view of how do you teach iconography and uh, that is actually something we're, we're, we're developing on the Patreon platform right now. Uh, hopefully in preparation for the fall when it will be actually taught for the first time. Um, taught for the first time by, by Himalayan Art Resources. So we'll leave it at that. You can press the like button, you can subscribe, you can join HAR on Patreon, and you can also make a donation on the homepage of Himalayan Art Resources.